from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Here you go, boy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You guys know I'm a wine fanatic. I have a wine cellar. I just bought a home up uh, in Santa Barbara County, right in the center of wine country. 20-acre spread. I take my vacations where wine is made. I was in Tuscany last summer. I've been to Bordeaux. I've been to Rioja. I'm always traveling somewhere with this wine. Wine's a big part of my life. I've got a glass of wine in front of me right now. A little Shiraz from Barossa Valley. That's what I'm drinking right now. It's a subject I care about. It's uh, something that people are very passionate about. And in this segment of the program, uh, we're going to talk about wine and specifically... We're going to talk with uh, our guest, uh, who is a winemaker, and he owns Irides Wines in Healdsburg, California. Patrick Urena, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much for having me, Tom. Now, you made uh, uh, some waves uh, that began, I guess, with your blog, and then it ended up with the Associated Press. Eventually, we did a telephone interview with you previously, and now we've uh, welcomed you to the studio. And it all started with a, a story about you and your daughter and wine. Tell us what happened. Well, basically, it, it came up with there was a, all these conversations going on on the Internet. And at a certain point, there was an AP reporter who got interested and decided to talk to me. And she found out that, in fact, uh, we were one of the many families that give our child wine. And as most European families do, it tends to be water with wine in it. And then occasionally she'll smell and taste our wine. And so we started talking about this. She then, in turn, interviewed a few other people and made an article about it. And to date, I think over 100 newspapers around the country have cat have carried a picture of my daughter with her nose in a glass of wine and also uh, talked about my personal philosophies in that. Well, let's talk a bit about that uh, because, uh, of course, it goes contrary to everything we're reading. Uh, they raise the drinking age from 18 to 21. You're an adult in every way at 18, except you can't, you couldn't drink this glass of wine. You couldn't buy a bottle of wine. Uh, and, and I don't even know if it's legal to drink that glass of wine. Uh, I'm not even clear on the legality here in California. If I gave you a glass of wine and you're 18 years old, am I breaking the law? Uh, according to California law, you would be. However, if you were in your home and you were giving a member of your family uh, that glass of wine, that would not be against the law. Really? Now, uh, are there any uh, rules on, on what you can, for example, what if you chose to give your daughter tequila? You know, I don't know that there are laws that restrict that that specifically. I know that you'd have to be pretty messed up to give a five-year-old girl a tequila shot. I agree, but, uh, but there are some pretty messed up people out there, and I'd be willing to bet there are people who drink with their parents, and it's not just wine at, at a refined dinner where they're sitting uh, uh, you know, at the height of civilization, having a meal paired up with a great wine. I'm sure there are people who smoke bong hits together with their kids, and I'm sure there are people who drink tequila together. And, and the problem, I think, with our society is that we lump everything together. For example, they will lump... Uh, together, the centerfold in Playboy magazine with child pornography. It's all bad. Everything bad. Uh, paintings of naked people, bad. It's all bad. Uh, when in reality, some things are art, some things are refined, and some things are vulgar, and that's the way it is. Some things are downright dangerous and exploitative of people. And I think the same thing is true uh, with drinking. Uh, do we really have to ban everybody who's 18 from having uh, any alcohol at all, from being able to buy a bottle of wine? Is is that solving problems, or is the problem the fact that there are many 18-year-olds who binge drink? And and I have to imagine, and that's why I've kind of taken it in this direction, uh, that that's part of, of your philosophy, is that it has something to do with 
let's face it, kids see uh, wine or beer or uh, booze as forbidden fruit. When they see alcohol as forbidden fruit, uh, you get the result we have in this country, which is uh, uh, kids uh, drinking heavily when they get to college or high school or in some cases now junior high and high school. Uh, I imagine that's one of your concerns raising your daughter. Oh, absolutely. I think that by introducing her to wine at an early age, it's not going to have the same mystique. It's not going to be the whole issue of her wanting to do something to rebel against her parents because we encourage her to have this with her meal. We really teach her from the very beginning that wine is part of the meal. It isn't necessarily something that she'll see us drink and she sees daddy come home and get his martini in his hand and that's okay. But she knows that she can have a little bit of wine in her water and then if she's really interested, she can sniff what I have in my glass. The the big part of that, I think, is in fact taking that mystique away so that kids learn to drink as they get older and they know what alcohol can do to them so that they don't get their first big drink with their buddies at the same time they get a car key in their hands. Now, of course, in California, um, we have a certain attitude about wine because we have so many wineries. We definitely have a wine culture in much of the state. And uh, we've had it for a long, long time. So I imagine that we have a certain attitude about wine. But that story was seen across the country. The AP, uh, 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 the story appeared in newspapers all over the place, including places where there are very few wineries, uh, uh, maybe a a bit more of a temperance attitude about alcohol. Uh, What kind of reaction did you get? Sure, there are a lot of positives, but were there some negative reactions as well? You know, I have to tell you that the most vitriolic responses... The most angry, vicious responses were two letters to the editor that were in the Napa Valley Register. Really? Yeah, there were parents in Napa Valley who freaked out on us. Two two different letters to the editor. We had a couple of negative responses here and there. I had one email sent to my to my winery's uh, inbox, but the rest of it was all fairly positive. Of people say, "Oh, of course, I've always done this all my life, and my parents gave me wine, and my grandfather made wine in the cellar, and we all did this." So it was the response has been pretty much overwhelmingly positive. But the Napa Register, there were two families. One, the woman who had started a, a teen abstinence drinking program, and the other one was a father who likened me to a criminal who would uh, blow a bong hit into his child's face to get them stoned. And that's outrageous. So, You're not blowing a bong hit into somebody's face. Exactly. I'm giving my daughter, as the uh, Holy Roman Catholic Church would say, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Absolutely. Now, now again, I, I don't think we talked about this yet. How old is your daughter? My daughter's five. She's Malia. five years old. And uh, does she know the difference between a Merlot and a Cabernet or a Chardonnay? Does she? Uh... She knows red and white pretty well. I mean, mm-hmm. that's very clear. And she knows which wine goes in which glass. And if I ask her to please bring me a corkscrew, she knows what drawer it is and what a corkscrew is to help me open the bottle. And uh, we talked about this when I spoke to you last time. But for people who didn't hear that interview, uh, your daughter's also been in the winery with you and watching you work. She has. Actually, her mother, my wife Genevieve, uh, was pregnant uh, when she was the winemaker of her family's winery, Chateau Felice in Chalk Hill. And uh, Genevieve was nine months pregnant on the crush pad during harvest of 2002. And Malia was born in the middle of, you know, I shouldn't say the middle, towards the end of harvest. And then uh, she started coming to work with us when Genevieve came back to work at about three months. And she was in her little playpen in the corner. And then I put her in her little carrier in front of me, and she'd walk the vineyards with me. She'd be with me while I was doing barrel work uh, in the cellar. So she was always raised around Grandpa's winery. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, you know, of course, I'm sure one thing people are curious about is uh, whether this actually works the way we think it does. Uh, your daughter, Malia, does she uh, does she want more and more wine? Does she drink it uh, in that little uh, 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 apportionment that you give her? Does she say, hey, give me the whole bottle? How, how does she react? Well, she really likes it, and she does react. If I just give her water and I don't have any wine and I pour the two of us wine, she will definitely say, excuse me, uh, can I have some wine, please? And then I'll put her little dollop in her water. Uh, and uh, if I have a glass of a particularly uh, aromatic wine that she can smell from her seat, then she'll say, Daddy, can I taste that? And I'll use my judgment and sometimes say that. However, I do want to be clear that I really, the focus is that we tell her that, yes, it's okay. But also, when we're out, it's like, no, honey, I'm sorry. We can only do that at home. And I also mentioned that it's something that this is a grown-up drink. And we like to let you have it at home because it's part of what we do at our table. But it's a grown-up drink. Now, uh, an interesting thing also, I talk to adults. I'm talking adult women, 25, 30 years old, about red wine. And many of them say, uh, it's too much. It's too much to handle. 
maybe they should have been uh, taught about wine when they were five years old. Well, you know, Tommy, you might be hanging around with the wrong women. Because <laughs> right now in the United States, uh, women are the prime drivers of the wine market. Over 60% of the p- consumers who make the choice in buying wine are women. And women in general have much stronger palates than men. Uh, they have a much more attuned sense of smell. And it's just a matter of, of training like all of us. You know, The more you try it, the more you learn. But do they separate out the women who drink white Zinfandel or the women who drink uh, wine coolers from the women who uh, buy a $40 bottle of wine? Hey, there's room for everything. Uh, i got to tell you, my wife has won a good uh, half dozen gold medals for her wines, and she's uh, won medals and high scores for about 30 different wines. And on a hot day by the pool, she would still, you know, make sure nobody's watching, but she'll pour white Zin over ice to sit by the pool. Is that so? <laughs> so uh, I've outed her. I'm sorry. I understand. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with your telephone calls. For Patrick Urena, he is the owner and the winemaker at Irides Wines in Healdsburg, California. And uh, you can, by the way, check out his website there, iridescwines.com, if you'd like to, to find out about the wines that, that he is making and uh, that you can get from him. Small production of Vineyard, and uh, uh, you will uh, enjoy reading about the wines and more about Patrick and his little controversy. That, uh, it, it seems to have been inadvertently stirred up. This certainly doesn't seem like it originated with a PR person or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, just very organically uh, stirred up a hornet's nest here. So uh, what do you think about that? Uh, Patrick gives his five-year-old daughter a little bit of wine mixed with water at dinner. Uh, most people say, isn't that civilized? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? We're teaching kids about wine at an early age. Some people think it's terrible. Where do you stand on this? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. This is plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even uh, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill slots. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Likey Show. <laughs> Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. And we are talking with Patrick Urena. He is the owner and winemaker at Iridescent Wines in Healdsburg, California. What a great place to spend a week in Healdsburg! Oh my, it's just fantastic. I've been many times. Do you have a, by the way, if you want to visit you, do you have a tasting room? Do you have a place where they can visit you? We actually don't. We're a virtual winery. Oh, really? And so, okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, there's a lot of us small wineries that rent space inside someone else's winery and sell wine over the Internet and have your office somewhere else. So we actually don't have a tasting room. But uh, my family's winery, uh, Chateau Felice Winery, it's my wife's father and stepmother and sister who now run it since my wife and I left to take our project a little bit bigger. They have Chateau Felice Winery in Chalk Hill, and they have a tasting room in downtown Healdsburg, which is a lot of fun. It's very uh, Gen Y, if you will. That is one of the great Sunday afternoons you could spend in California in Healdsburg, just walking around. Some of the best restaurants around, incredible food. I had great Thai food in Healdsburg. I loved it. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, what, you wouldn't expect somebody to say that. You expect them to talk about California cuisine. No, 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 no. Thai food, fantastic. Best burger in America I've found there at the Ravenous Restaurant. Extraordinary <laughs> burger. Uh, now I'm getting hungry. All right, now let's... <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Nicole on the Tom Likas Show. Patrick Urena, hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing Okay. Good. Well, I just uh, was listening. I'm actually on my way to Bethmo now because I need to have my little glass of Chardonnay this evening. But um, I'm calling because I agree with um, introducing, you know, minimal amounts of, of wine to your children at a young age. I was going on wine trips with my parents well before I was 21 and really not abusing the philosophy of, of knowing a great background in wine, you know, while all my friends were you know, binge drinking on the box wine, I was showing up with, you know, my La Crema or, you know, some other, you know, nice Chardonnay that I still enjoy to drink um, today. So 
I just want to, you know, offer up that I don't think it's a bad thing to introduce, you know. All right, you don't think it's a bad thing. Now, do you think it's a good thing to give a five-year-old girl some wine? Um, maybe not a five-year-old, but definitely introducing it at a, you know, maybe a little bit more mature age is not such a bad thing. Um, you know, five-year-olds, it's really hard to say because they're typically not going to like, they're not going to have a, a developed palate for, you know, having a, a red wine, perhaps. But isn't that how you develop your palate? Uh, certainly, I find as an adult tasting wine... Uh, that my palate is always developing, and I'm always finding varietals I never heard of or countries that make wine that I didn't know made what, like Lebanon or uh, uh, states in the United States that make wine that I had never tasted, like Virginia uh, or Texas uh, uh, or Alaska. Uh, so uh, your palate is always developing, and uh, who's to say your palate couldn't start developing at five? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, minimal amounts, I think, is, is certainly okay. Um you know, so I, I definitely agree that it's, you know, it's never too, I mean, you're not going to put it in their baby bottle or anything, but, you know, if they want to have a little taste that's mixed with water, I definitely, I don't think that it's it's that bad of a thing to, you know, teach the cultural and, the you know, the philosophical things regarding wine. It is, it's a tradition that's been passed on for, you know, centuries now, so. Actually, yeah, Nicole, the French, have, uh, the French have this tradition where when a child is born, the very first thing they do is, they dip their finger into some champagne, and they put that little drop of the finger onto the child's lips before the child even goes to mom. Wow. Look at that. Thank you, Nicole, for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Holly on the Tom Lycus Show for our guest, Patrick Urena. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Great. Um, I'm one of the naysayers. Sorry to say, I don't think it's a good idea, and as elegant and wonderful and sophisticated as, it, as you may think wine is for your child, your body breaks down alcohol as alcohol. You, you might as well be giving her water down tequila. It's, there's no difference. Body does not differentiate alcohol by what you know, the type of alcohol it is. You know, a five-ounce or seven-ounce um, beer is the same as a shot of tequila in terms of your, the way your system breaks it down. So I don't think it's a good idea. Well, that's very that's very true, and I have to say that I, I agree with you completely on that. I've always wondered about folks that say, "Oh, I, I can't drink gin because I get crazy on gin," but I'll I'll have the vodka. Alcohol yeah. is alcohol, no matter what it is. However, you got to remember that I'm talking about giving my daughter maybe maybe 20 milliliters of wine inside a glass of water, uh -huh. and things like that. So that's they really we're not impacting on that level, and we're actually not doing it to be sophisticated or even to train my daughter's palate as wonderful as that is. The main reason we're doing it is because it's what we do. It's part of our family life at table. Some families have, you know, their regular family traditions, whether it's uh, we eat popcorn on Friday nights when we rent a movie. Well, we have wine at our dinner table, and that's uh, what we're doing with our child. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Th thank you. She collapsed like a house of cards. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brenna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, um, I, I just turned the radio on and heard uh, Patrick yeah. talking about giving his uh, his five year old daughter wine, and I just want to say I totally agree with that. When I was five, my parents were giving me wine with dinner. They didn't even put water in it; it wouldn't give me a huge glass or anything. But um, I actually um, I really liked it, and sometimes I would even ask for it. Um, probably more because it made me feel grown up than me actually liking the taste, but. Um, with all this going on, many of my pen, my uh, friends' parents were sheltering their kids from alcohol, and and uh, when I was allowed to have you know margarita parties in high school, um, a lot of people would be really shocked by that. And in the end, most of my friends whose parents were sheltering them, they're all raging alcoholics now. And um, and even on my 21st birthday, I, I had one mixed drink, and um, you know, and I I enjoy wine. That's probably what I prefer to drink most of the time. Um, I mean, and forget cultural and philosophical reasons. Um, just, I think it's a good thing because your your kid's not going to feel really special when they're 16 and go into a party, and they're not going to feel really cool about getting wasted. Um, so, I mean, I, I just I think it's a really good thing, and I'm totally healthy now, even though you know our bodies break down alcohol in different ways when we're younger. Um, I'm super healthy. I play tons of soccer, and so I think it's a really good thing. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Margaret, on the Tom Likas Show for our guest, Patrick Urena. Hello. Yes, hello, Tom. How are you? Great. 
Um, I, you know, when I was being raised, uh, it was uh, it was the same thing in my family table. Um, my family let me have uh, alcohol, like just a taste of it. I think it's um, traditional and how you're raised. So you know, if he knows what he's doing with his daughter, he wouldn't do anything to harm his child. So. You know, I have two children of my own, so if my son wants a taste of champagne or wine, I'll give him a little taste of it. I don't think anything wrong with, is wrong with that. We have a little bit of uh, family folklore now that my uh, daughter on her second Christmas, so the first time she was speaking at Christmas dinner, we're sitting around the table, and her very first compound-structed sentence was, when there was a lull in the conversation, all of a sudden everyone heard this tiny voice say, May I have some more champagne, please? <laughs> and everyone's neck just broke as they turned to look at the child. Um, so it's uh, you, it's all about family tradition in many ways. Thank you, Margaret. This is Joe on the Tom Likens Show. For our guest, Patrick Urena, hello. Yeah, hello, Tom. How you doing? Okay. All right. Hey, Patrick, listen, uh, you're, you're laughing about this. This is funny because you're, this child is going to grow up to be a wino or an alcoholic, and it sounds like you're one already. If you drink every day, that's, that's designated as being an alcoholic. Then you're talking about martinis on top of wine. You know, I don't agree with this at all. It's crazy. Well, that's, that's your prerogative. Uh, there are very many definitions of what is an alcoholic, and the majority of common definition that's understood by the medical community is someone whose body is addicted to the alcohol. And honestly, I can truly say that I'm not addicted to the alcohol. Uh, I love it. I, I don't drink it to get drunk. I drink it for the flavors, uh, whether although, it is really good tequila. Drunk, I'm sure Actually, I'm I sure. probably have been drunk maybe twice in my adult life. Oh, is that right? Yeah, honestly. Uh, because I, know, I, I drink. You're, you're and, no, I also am a really big child, boy that has a big liver. Preparing this child to be, you know, to, to become an alcoholic by giving her this so early in her life. Well, actually, I think I'm preparing her to not opinion. become an alcoholic. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess we'll find out, won't we? Exactly. I was so speaking to a retailer today in town, actually, uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. a wonderful man here in Santa Monica or West L.A., who uh, was telling me about his experience because he had seen the article, and uh, he is uh, it's the Wine Expo over in West L.A. And Roberto said that he grew up with split households. Half of the time he was in New Orleans, half the time he was in Minnesota. And at Grandma's in New Orleans, they always got beer and some alcohol to drink. And then when they'd visit all the cousins in Minnesota, they got nothing. And it was very but but then all the cousins would sneak off and get white lightning and get totally smashed in the woods. And he said, "Guess where all the alcoholics live now, in our family." Uh -huh. Well, there's one that's going to be living in your house if you don't be careful with that daughter of yours, sir. Well, uh, I'll be real uh, careful. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd, you take me on Holly Dairy style, please? That would be tasteless, Joe, but uh, I guess we could. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. Our guest, Patrick Urena. He's the owner and winemaker at Iridescent Wines in Healdsburg, California. Uh, made news recently for something really simple. His five year old daughter drinks a little bit of wine at the family dinner table. And that has uh, gotten an awful lot of attention. Uh, amazing, but true. Here's John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. John. How are you? Do you care? I do. I love your show, so of course I care. I'm doing great. <coughs> well, um, I, I was able to drink as a kid. My parents used to give me a little uh, wine and some water. Uh, you know, to get to sip some of Dad's uh, beer once in a while, and um, I thought it was great. I would I would even argue over the amount of water that got poured in <laughs> with the wine, and uh, telling them that it, that it didn't matter. I was actually getting the same amount of alcohol either way. So you might as well just give me enough water. Um, as I got older, it turned into an ice cube, and then, um, but older being like seven or eight, um, I I don't know how young it was when I started. I think I four, five, six when I was when I was able to taste it. Um, and then, un unfortunately for me, and I don't agree with the laugh color at all about Patrick being an alcoholic or his daughter turning into one, but unfortunately for me, um, I did turn into an alcoholic. 
or maybe I was. But here, away. that's the question, though. I mean, uh, are you genetically predisposed towards being an alcoholic? Alcoholism has a relationship to diabetes, low blood sugar, and other conditions that people have. Uh, some people uh, inherit uh, the trait to be alcoholic from uh, other family members. So, can you really say that that's the reason? No, I don't think that's the reason at all. I, I believe that I was that it was you know my, it was my grandparents you know through my dad. I believe that that was the cause of it, not the not the drinking wine at an early age. I also did a lot of you know I had allergies and asthma, so I took um, uh, what essentially then would would have been speed for asthma, and uh, you know that that probably contributed to it to it more than than the wine being that I learned early on how to self medicate. The the wine was a treat. The beer was a treat. It was later when I started sneaking it or stealing it or doing other things that that it became something addictive. I don't um, I don't remember it being an obsession or an addiction as a child. Um, I, I, I with my own kids, I don't think that I would do that just because there there's a fifty fifty chance they're going to go the same way as me. Um, but I don't, I don't see it as a problem either for other people. If it's not in your family, things like that. Um, and we talk to our kids about it as well. If they want to try things, if they want to do this or they want to do that, to come and talk to us about it because of that risk they have. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't really think there's a problem with it. I, I, and maybe it could even be used as a tool to see if your kid is an alcoholic. Here, drink this. And if they can't. The but much as we might want to. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Laura on the Tom Lycus Show. For our guest, Patrick Urena. hello. Hello, Tom. Long-time listener. Great show. Thank you. Um, I think it's fantastic that this guy sits down at the dinner table with his child. That's more than most families do at all. And, uh, you know, people become alcoholics because they have no foundation or coping skills, not because they have a 20 milliliters of water and alcohol at the dinner table. Um, I think it's fantastic, and uh, he should be commended for having dinner with his child because very few parents do anymore. And uh, so that's all I have to say about it. Well, thank you. That's great. That's a fundamental building block, I think, of our of our lives. And I think that may be one of the things that might give Europeans a little more advantage than most Americans in their family structure And that we tend to not have that advantage. We don't take the time to sit down and at table and spend that time together as a family. And that's a pretty pretty strong, fast rule for us, unless there's a good reason for us to be absent from home. Is that part of why you wanted to uh, have a winery, which is kind of a home-based business, essentially? Oh, definitely. We wanted to be in uh, increase our quality of life. And uh, now I've got to tell everybody out there that the wonders of, of the wine world are stupendous. However, it is not a money-making operation. Uh, there's the old adage, the best way to make a small fortune in the wine business is to start with a large one and whittle it down. Well, my wife and I didn't even start with a large fortune. <laughs> so we're just uh, squeaking by. But the quality of life is fantastic because we are spending the time together. And we are, uh, you know, I live in a town to 10,000 people. Uh, it's only an hour and a half from San Francisco, but it's a gorgeous little town. And we walk everywhere, and it's a, it's a really nice quality of life. And that is the, the table is the center of that life. We'll continue with more of your telephone calls for our guest, Patrick Urena. He's the owner of Iridesce Wines, located in Hillsburg, California. Uh, his uh, national exposure came essentially not just through his uh, small winery, but also because uh, a story appeared that uh, talked about him giving his five-year-old daughter, whose name is Malia, he, he gave her wine with dinner, and suddenly it became this big controversy. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. With us in studio, the owner of Iridesce Wines in Hillsburg, California, Patrick Urena. Visit his website, 
Read about his wines at iridescentwines.com. That's spelled I-R-I-D-E-S-S-E. Wines, no space, iridescentwines.com. And we continue our conversation about whether you want to be giving your kid a little bit of wine and uh, teaching about alcohol at a young age so they don't become binge drinkers. Let's say hello here to uh, Robert. Robert is in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you guys? Doing great. Wonderful. Hey, I just have a question. I um, have no idea about it, but the legalities of serving alcohol to a minor should be illegal. Are you worried about getting arrested at all for this? Well, that varies from state to state and jurisdiction to jurisdiction. In California, you actually are allowed to give your child uh, alcohol in your home. And uh, I think the uh, you know Child Protective Services would come in and look at you if they had you know, reason to suspect you were abusing your child and doing all these other things uh, and giving them alcohol. But I've had it on highest authority that, uh, that I'm doing okay. I understand. Great. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you, Robert. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Emily on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay, Emily. I want to know why America is making such a big deal about this when half the people are driving through McDonald's or KFC and sitting their kid in front of the TV. Here, this guy is having a, you know, beautiful meal with his family, teaching them traditions, growing a bond between him and his daughter, another thing our world is lacking, yet... Everyone's making a big deal about this as if it's some horrible thing. Me and my fiancé take our son to the wineries all the time to do tastings. He's too young. He's only a year old to actually give him some. But people frown at that as if we're doing, you know, taking him to the bar or something. It's like there's nothing wrong with spending an afternoon as a family, you know, just enjoying each other's company, sitting down having a picnic. And if, if he's older and wants to sip... Not going to shelter him to the point of resentment. Has he has he, has he asked for a sip? Uh, he's not. He doesn't talk yet. He's just a you know one and a half. He's mama, dada. That could be <laughs> right the first. Now. That could be his first words, for all you know. <laughs> now, Every did you? Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I see it as you're, there's so many people in this world whose mind doesn't pass uh, MTV and what's on uh, TMZ. That you know, you're you're showing them culture. You're showing them things that you know are beyond. This our generation of what you know this world is. So I think that you're doing a wonderful thing. Well, thank you very much. You're I think I, I think part of the problem is that Americans, and I've said this uh, many times, Americans are not worldly. You know, we we're fat and happy and rich, and we've got the richest country on earth, even when we're in a recession. And we've got every possible uh, device, every possible gadget, every possible electronic game. Uh, but but we don't travel to other countries. We don't know or care about the cultures of other countries. Uh, and so we really don't know how the rest of the world is. What's acceptable in the rest of the world, good ideas the rest of the world might have that we haven't heard about. Most Americans uh, d d d don't even care about that stuff. And so I think that's part of whatever objection you might hear. That's a huge part that I encounter is, is that we're really exposing her to something which is a global culture now. Uh, you're even talking about wine being made in Mongolia at this point in the world, not just in Europe and in the Middle East and Latin America and Australia and everywhere else we can try and make it. Um, one of the things you'll also encounter is that kind of also the puritanical aspect of American culture, which has seen a resurgence of late. And, you know, it's really funny because I hear people always, especially in political discussions, talk about the founding fathers and about the colonies and what our society was based on. And the Puritans were actually considered to be the fanatical religious extremists of Europe, and they were actually leaving because they were being kicked out. And people didn't want to have anything to do with these folks, which, was, which were their version of Islamist extremists and, uh, and that type of psychopath right now. In Europe, they were the Puritans, and the Puritans came and founded parts of our country. So uh, you might want to keep that in mind, America, when you're talking about uh, where we're coming from in our culture. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Joe on the Tom Likas Show for our guest, Patrick Urena. Hello. Hey, how are you? Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller, and, uh, you know, the only thing that I had uh, that was a concern, I mean, I, I totally see where you're coming from as far as, and, uh, you know, you, whatever you do in your home, it, whether, you know, it, it, as, as long as it doesn't exceed the limits of, of you know, uh, causing a, a child any type of harm or danger is acceptable, in my, uh, you know, and... 
but my question to you is, and and it's a little bit of a, of a raised issue for myself, is do you think that at some certain point in time, do you think it would be creating uh, some type of, and when I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, referring to it as in terms of an everyday habit, do you think it would, you know, a, or create some type of a habit for them where they, in their eyes, they, they see that, hey, look, maybe this is okay to do, and in, the, in, law, in, in the long run, is it going to affect them? Are they going to think that, you know, this is something I could do every day? or Because not everybody's going to be able to, to, to uh, uh, you know, focus in that, hey, this is a family thing. We're just going to do it at dinner. It's, it doesn't go as far as this, you know. You, you just... You, it's only during family time, and I totally understand where you're coming from, you know. I, I have a little girl myself, so I, I do see where you're coming from. It's like, you know, this is our home. This is what we're doing as a family, and that's okay. But the only – I mean, with your opinion, what do you think? Is it something that you would maybe have an idea that it might go a little further out of that boundary? Well, i got to tell you, consistency is not one of my virtues. And uh, definitely, you know, it's not something that we do every day. Uh, Malia does not get wine every day. Uh, she doesn't even get a bath every day most times. Uh, but we really, I do understand and I see where you're coming from. And I can only say that I can only speak for my household. And I'm not establishing some new pedagogy, some new way of teaching things, of doing things, of educating children. What I'm talking about is what I do in my home. And people need to do what's appropriate in their home. And I can only hope that the things that they do in their home are giving them as much pleasure and family unity as ours is. Thank you for the call, Joe. It's Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, gentlemen. How's it going? Great. Good. Listen, uh, I was born here in the U.S., but my family is originally from Argentina, and uh, it's a culture where you pretty much drink wine at every meal. And uh, from a young age, you know, my sister and I, we were raised, you know, drinking wine, but... In our culture, it's wine with club soda. And I remember, you know, the older we got, well, it was less club soda, more wine. But I'm 30 years old. I'm well-adjusted. I'm married, you know, with, with a child. And, uh, you know, over-drinking, binge-drinking has never been an issue for me, for my wife, you know, for my sister. And I, I have plenty of friends raised where their families weren't tolerant of it, wasn't accepted. And they have, they have tons of problems. Even now that they're 30, they, you know, they're partying like they're 18 years old and want to get drunk every every weekend. So... You know, we, we have a four-year-old now, and we allow her to drink wine, you know, similar, you know, t to how I did it, which is with, you know, plenty of club soda, but uh, it seems to be working just fine. I, I don't see what the big deal is, honestly. Great. Well, cheers. Uh, that's a, it's a great thing, and you're, again, passing on your family traditions, so I applaud that. Thank yeah. you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Patrick, I just want to say you're insane, man. You're just crazy. Why would you even want to do that? No, I'm just kidding. I have no problem with the way anybody raises their family. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's no one else's business. And, uh, you know, if you've, got, uh, if you've got a kid drinking wine, which, you know, that's your thing, I, I think that maybe, you know, you should just let her become 21. It's not like her palate has to adjust at a young age. Yeah, we're like I said, we're not trying to train her palate or anything. And actually most... Uh most people who are looking at child rearing in, in terms of blogs and newsletters and discussion will tell you that even when you're introducing kids to food, you've got to give it, you know, most foods you have to give it to them 10 times before they'll ex accept it once. Uh, and it's, and palate training is a part of life. And, uh, and palates shift, by the way. So I'm, I'm very honestly prepared for my daughter to one day say, Daddy, that tastes gross. I don't want any. And that's, you know, that's quite all right. I didn't like alcohol. Uh, until I was significantly older. Uh, I grew up in Santa Monica and went to Santa Monica Elementary. And one of my teachers in elementary school was a man named John McNichols, who was famous because he wrote a column for the Evening Outlook called The Motorcycle Wino. And my dad would always buy the wines he recommended. And I still remember my very first wine that I got to try when I was 10 years old. And it was a Pedroncelli Zinfandel. And to this day, I'm, and I'm very happy now to be friends with the Pedroncelli family. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> thank you very much for the call, Jared. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming in. Found it great to see you. And uh, tell folks how they can get in touch with you. Please, uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'm at www.iridescwines.com. That's our winery. I also have a blog as an author and wine educator, and that's enophilia.wordpress.com. O-E-N-O-P-H-I-L-I-A. Thank you so much. Thank you.
The Tom Likas Show.